Okay, today's gonna be a little bit different. Instead of presenting evidence and drawing conclusions, I'm just gonna tell you a story. That story is about Twitter and the absolutely idiotic state of affairs over there that has landed me with not one, but two permanent suspensions. It all starts with Game of Thrones. HBO's Game of Thrones is many things, but among those things, it's rather eloquent at times. In Game of Thrones, there is a quote where the Red Priestess, I think it was, says, quote, All men must die, referring to the inevitability of one's own mortality. I don't actually know or remember or care, maybe it means something else, but the point is the quote is pretty famous and it loosely pertains to destiny. Now, Twitter, being the intellectual wasteland that it is, has established a series of what I believe to be bot programs or bot parameters that catch reports and execute punishments. Heels vs. Babyface, another YouTuber who works closely with geeks and gamers, I was on their podcast and also Friday Night Tights with him at one time, and they're an awesome group of guys, it was a really fun experience, but anyways, Heels vs. Babyface said this quote as a reply and got permabanned on Twitter. Setting aside the fact that worse things are said every single day on that platform, constantly towards individuals like J.K. Rowling or Gina Carano, this simple quote landed him with a permanent suspension, and when he appealed, it got upheld, meaning he's probably gone for good at this point. I'm not sure what stage of the disciplinary process he was on before all this. Some people seem to be saying he had two out of three strikes already, so this was the final straw. I don't really know, but it doesn't really matter because everything is equally as absurd, regardless of whether or not he was on thin ice with Twitter's disciplinary process. Nerd Rodix, and if I have any part of this wrong, I apologize. Nerd Rodix, another member of the group and another fellow YouTuber, simply replied to someone answering the question of why Heels vs. Babyface had been banned, and he got suspended. I think this was a seven-day suspension for that one, not entirely sure, but still. He simply replied saying the quote, all men must die, and he got suspended as well. Next up is Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers. He posted the exact same quote, but not a reply this time. I think that's one of the key differentials here. And that tweet is still up, or actually no, it got taken down, but it never got him suspended, his entire account, right? That's the key difference. And then I myself, deciding that I wasn't gonna be left out of all the fun, posted a nearly identical tweet and also replied to a couple people with the quote and got immediately suspended. Here's the thing, I don't believe any of this is specifically intentional or deliberate, what I've just described, right, the effects of being banned and how it happens, but that almost makes it worse. It would appear that there is a simple switch in place that, when reported, detects the words from the quote and just auto-bans you. It seems that it must be a reply to someone, and it also seems that it must be reported for it to happen, though I'm not clear on that because it almost felt instant for me when I replied and got suspended, so honestly, who knows. Point is, I said the quote too, and then I was suspended indefinitely. Here's where it gets interesting. Not only is there an inconsistent policy being enforced by this program, some of the people posting the quote are fine, others are permabanned immediately, and we have no clarity on why, but there is also an inconsistent response. Immediately after my ban, a few people began tweeting about how my account was now suspended, and then on my other account, not the upper echelon one, my personal one, someone claiming to work at Twitter reached out to me and said, don't worry, I'll fix it. Now, I have no idea if this person actually works at Twitter, and I have no idea if they were involved in the slightest with what came next, but they asked me not to say too much or show our conversation or draw attention to their name and actual account if possible, other than saying, someone at Twitter. It could be totally manufactured, I have absolutely no idea. This person said, I will fix it, you need to fill out an appeal, and then I'll go track it down and process it. Again, I don't know how the whole thing works, but I figured, okay, why not? I filled out the appeal, and within minutes, literally within minutes, my account was unsuspended. I have all of the emails showing this, and I also know specifically which tweet it was, in reply to whom as well, that got reported. I asked people specifically to report this, to test things, so this person did not genuinely want to get me in trouble or anything like that. It just so happened this was the one that tripped the system. Anyways, all was well, I was unbanned, and I went to bed. Today, I wake up, and my account is suspended again. Okay. Why? I check my email, and there is the exact same tweet emailed to me again as the reason why I am permanently suspended. Again, after they unsuspended me for the exact same tweet the night before. What in the actual fuck is going on over there? Well, now I can't actually get a response from the person who claims to work at Twitter, the person who said, fill out an appeal, I'll hunt it down and process it, and my account is resuspended for the exact same thing that got overturned already. And there are other creators who deliberately tweeted the same thing and aren't suspended. And there are creators who tweeted it and were permabanned where the appeal got upheld, whereas mine actually worked. And it's just, it's a com total disaster over there. Twitter could not possibly have handled this worse. And no matter what you look at, it's inconsistent. Now, on the one hand, I can go outside more, get tan, work out, and become a mega chad because Twitter is out of my life. 
On the other, I use it to communicate with certain creators and business partners, so I sort of need it in that capacity, but I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen because I have now been permanently banned two times for the same tweet. The first time I came back like a phoenix from the ashes and bragged about it openly, only to be banned again, so tough luck on me for that one, and the second time remains to be seen. If you go to Twitter right now and search hashtag kill all men, you will find thousands of people who used it or posted it or still are or replied to it, and they are all perfectly fine. You can search any number of similar terms or phrases and see that a huge range of people say it with impunity. They have something in common, I'll get to that, even when it's aimed directly at others or actually means what it sounds like it could mean. But when a few YouTube creators use it as a quote from Game of Thrones and then as a joke to get Twitter's idiotic policy to come after them so they can showcase it, you get a perma and you get a perma ban and you get two perma bans. What is actually happening? The thing that these people have in common, the ones who say this type of thing and mean it, by the way, every single day while nothing happens, is that they are leftists. And I know, I know, it's not about politics, there's no conspiracy against certain groups for their beliefs, yeah, yeah, sure. But look at this in context. I went through and reported as many of those accounts who use the kill all men hashtag as I could find, and it's been like 12 hours. Nothing happened to any of them. I reply with a Game of Thrones quote, and I'm instantly gone which then turns into an appeal, then I'm unbanned, maybe this Twitter person in my DMs actually did something, who knows, and then I'm banned for the same tweet again inside of 24 hours. Eventually, it starts to look like a choice. Eventually, it does start to seem like they are deliberately letting certain accounts exist with similar rhetoric, arguably far worse rhetoric, actually. But when someone that is, shall we say, not ideologically homogenous says something even remotely close to what is required by their policies for a ban, they jump at the chance to get rid of them and then what, manually go back and just reban them again for something after the fact, even though it was overturned? Like, it's, it's completely idiotic. Most or all of this is a bot program or an algorithmic decision-making set of parameters behind the scenes. The only issue is that if they have a bot command for this specifically, they could have a bot command for the kill all men hashtag or any of the other ones that are much worse and much more deliberate. Not having that, that's a choice. That should demonstrate the absolute idiocy of their policy team, their enforcement systems, and their overall structure because for me, it's inconsequential. I get banned, I move on, I maybe have a hard time getting in contact with certain people I need to talk to at times, but who cares? For others though, that might actually cut off a critical arm of their communications, all because they said something decidedly not as bad as the hordes of angry feminists patrolling the platform every day, but bad enough where a bot decided to nuke them. Then they got past it, and then for the exact same thing, even though that had already been overruled, it nuked them again. There is hard data to prove now that Twitter erodes your intelligence. I have to believe that one of the biggest reasons why is because they deliberately cultivate a platform that allows for certain types of people to flourish while inconsistently purging others for far less severe activity. When measuring understanding, comprehension, and memorization, using Twitter decreased aptitude by anywhere between 25 to 40 percent. That's 25 to 40 percent less in key skill sets which are required all throughout life for success and healthy development. At the very least, inconvenience aside, this opened my eyes to the actual idea of moving away from the platform. I always tell myself I will, but then I find myself scrolling and scrolling once again. The developer, the actual developer who made Twitter's retweet button, now openly regrets what he did and what he made, because the site is actually damaging to society. It is constructed to give dopamine hits akin to hard drug use, and I would always come back because there was no actual finality to the idea of leaving. Well, that might have just changed, and I don't think I'm going to be sad if it has. If I really am permanently suspended, which it does look like, that can be one of the easiest and most painless ways to cut down on usage. It removes the individual fortitude component and just exiles that disgusting space from the equation entirely. I should obviously have the mental discipline to quit on my own if necessary, but if I just get booted from the space for something that trivial, is it really all that different? It's the same end result. Bottom line, I'm not sad. This might actually be a really good thing, but my god is it absurd. Inconsistent and very, very unprofessional for Twitter. Banning people with that level of inadequacy flies right in the face of their mission as a platform. And when Jack Dorsey, I really don't like that guy, is preaching to high heaven that he wants to build a systemic framework to help encourage more healthy debate, conversations, and critical thinking, his words, not mine, that's a direct quote, as his platform literally makes people less intelligent and upholds policies like this garbage, yeah, mission failed, my dude. 
That's it. Looks like I'm gone from Twitter, and it's a funny story how it happened, at least to me. If you want to support, there are links down below, primarily Odyssey, which is a YouTube platform alternative, also Locals, $5 a month, and that's probably where I'll try to do the bulk of my communication now. There's another YouTuber to check out, merch, social media, except Twitter, lol, and some other stuff too, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.